Okay, in our using our first rule, we remember that it's for product of powers. What does that mean? When we have multiplication of variables, that's when we're going to use our rule. So to start, we should notice that we can only use this rule when we have the same base. In this case, I have an x here and an x here. They are the same base. So I can use my rule. My rule says I keep the same base, in this case, an x. And then the rule says that you're going to look at the exponents of those variables and you're going to add them, in this case, a 5 and a 2. So that will be a 5 plus 2. So that means that my the result of my multiplication here is x to the 7th. Now in the second example, things are a little bit different because we have an x as base on both terms and then I have a y on both terms. That means that I'm going to multiply those. So first, we're going to start with the x. So I'm going to write my x as base. And then I'm going to look at the exponents. Now here, in the first one, I have an exponent of 2. But the second one doesn't have an exponent, which means there's an invisible 1 right there. So this will be a 2 plus 1. Then I'm going to move on for my next variable, which in this case is y's. So I'm going to write first my variable, in this case y, and then I'm going to add the exponents, but in this case I'll focus only on the exponents of y. Here I have a 7, and then for the next one there's no exponent, which tells me that that's an, another invisible 1. So this will be a 7, plus 1, which tells me that my final answer will be x to the third because of the 2 plus 1, and then y to the eighth because of the 7 plus 1. Now my second rule says the quotient that means when we have division, and if we want to think about it that way, in theory it should be the opposite of this. In here we were adding exponents, here we're going to subtract exponents. But some of the, fee the, the different rules remain, such as we still have to have the same base. So I have x's, that means I'm going to keep my base, x. And now I'm going to focus on my exponents. 5 and 2. And I will have to do a subtraction. 5 minus 2. It is important that you remember that it's in the order that you have them. 5 minus 2. Not the other way around. If we change the order, we modify the answer. And it's going to be wrong. So in this case, my final answer is x to the 7th power. Now, for the second example, we have two variables x and y's. So we're going to do just as previously. First of all, don't forget there's invisible 1's here. Okay, so I'm going to put my x as my base, and then I'm going to look at my exponents, 2 and 1, which tell me this will be a 2 minus 1. Then I'm going to put my variable y, and then I would look at the exponents for the y's, in this case, 7 and 1. So it will be 7 minus 1. So my final answer in this case will be x to the first power or no exponent, which I won't write, y to the sixth power. Okay, now our power of power rules. That means that here we have a term with an exponent, and in everything is elevated to another exponent. So we have an exponent for an exponent. This rule is similar to the other ones. We keep the same base, in this case my m. But what will we do here is that we're going to take those two exponents, the 2 and the 3, and we're going to multiply them. In this case, 3 times 2. 
giving me my final answer of m to the 6 power. For the next case, things are a little bit different because we have two of them. Well, the only really difference is that now we have a double multiplication. What does that mean? That this 3 will multiply the 1 and the 3. So, we're going to have an x to the 3 times 1. And then we're going to have a y to the 3 times 3. So each individual exponent got multiplied to the one outside. My total fi uh, and final answer will be x to the 3 times 1, 3. y to the 3 times 3, 9. The radical, ex the rational exponent, sorry, is when you have a fraction for an exponent. And this one is really simple because all that we have to do is just focus on the numerator and denominator of the fraction. In this case, my numerator is 2. My denominator is 5. And what the rule says is that I'm going to write. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the square root. Okay. I'm going to put my base, h, inside. And the only thing that I have to do is put my 5 outside. My denominator goes outside. And my numerator, 2, goes inside. So this is the fifth root of h to the second power. Exactly the same will happen for the next one. Focus on my numerator and denominator. And I write square root. My base is x. Now my denominator, my number under, it's a 2. And my numerator, it's a 3. So that goes with the variable. So we have the square root of x to the third power. The negative exponent rule is a very simple rule. All that it says is that we have a negative exponent. It should be the reciprocal. What does that mean? Right now, we have a negative 9 for exponent. So what that means is that we're going to make it positive by doing what? We're going to write a 1 over m to the 9. Sorry, this is an exponent. 9. So what that means is that now my exponent became positive by putting in the denominator. For the next one, my negative exponent is already a denominator. So what I'm going to do is now it's going to do the reciprocal. What does that mean? Instead of this going even lower, now it's going to go on top as a numerator. How does that look like? Well, there's no longer a fraction. This will be just a y to the second power. Our last rule for today is the zero exponent. And the zero exponent is very simple. Anything to the zero power equals one. So m to the zero power, I don't know the value of m, but I know that if it's to the zero power, the total is one. Then I have 25 to the zero power. Any number to the zero power is one. So 25 to the zero power is one.